Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. Now, this is Gottlieb's 1963 Swing Along Pinball Machine. We've been working on this sucker for several days now. So if you didn't see those videos, go check them out before you watch this one. We did a video where we kind of cleaned it up, cleaned all the switches and all of that stuff. And then we did a video where we repaired it and got it up and running. And then we did a video where we installed all of the parts that we got in and we worked on the back glass a little bit and some light bulbs and things. And now we are up to the point where we need to work on the play field a little bit. So we're going to do a video showing you what happened when we worked on the play field, which we haven't done yet, but we're going to do right now. Now the thing is in pretty good shape already, but it needs a good cleaning and has a couple issues that need addressed, and then it needs new rubber bands, of course. So that's what we're going to do. So this is what we're starting with. We'll get a good, a nice good uh, record of how it began. So the first thing you notice is that here by the flippers, they have put these semicircles on. Those usually are made for to put around pot bumpers. It's literally a sticker. And normally I might take those off, but the thing is. If I do, there must be a reason those are on there, so there's probably wear underneath them. So we're just going to leave them. This particular game, someone's already purchased it, and they basically wanted to take it home with them the way it was. But we insisted, no, 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 we gotta, we got to work on it a little bit. Because, you know, we don't want to let it get out, of the, get out of the door without being 100%, right? So uh, we, uh, we have to get it a little bit better off. But we are, so my whole point is, some people might not like those, but the customer that we're selling it to is happy with everything the way it is, so we're going to leave them uh, so that we don't have to deal with whatever horror is under them. <laughs> this was the first game with spinning targets. So we have three spinning targets here. One of them's missing, we took it off. But we have three spinning targets here that uh, do their thing, so we've got to mess with those a little bit. Uh, and... Um, up here, everything looks pretty good. They've put those same stickers around the skirts of the pop bumpers. Some of the pop bumpers are chewed up a little bit. That purple one in particular has a little, couple little chips out of it, but that doesn't really affect gameplay, and I don't have any purple ones. And if I did get a purple one, it wouldn't match the pop bumper cap. So it's one of those things where we're going to leave it for now. If it uh, keeps getting worse and it ends up back to us, we'll come up with a different solution. But but pretty much everything works. There is a lane guard there, a rollover guard, light shield, whatever you want to call it, that's broke. So we need one of those. But all of the plastics look pretty good. Everything's pretty nice. It just all needs cleaned and serviced and all the light bulbs replaced and waxed and all of that good stuff. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to take everything off of the play field and then we're going to come set it over here on our Night Rider. Ah, uh, Night Rider. This one's coming up. You will see a video of it soon. That's vintage dirt. I'm being repaired. Sounds like something uh, a character in, in uh, Alice's Wonderland would, would say. <laughs> That's vintage dirt. I'm being repaired. Maybe the Mock Turtle. We called him a tortoise. Well, why did you call him a tortoise when he, he, he was a turtle? Because he taught us. Okay, so I'm going to set up the uh, camera, the, the tripod, and then uh, we'll take everything off the play field and see what it, what it looks like when it gets down to the bare wood.
Okay, folks, so this is what we're starting with. The thing is pretty clean. It's, you know, you could have got away with just waxing it. But I like to see what's underneath everything, so here we are. These two bulbs aren't on, but it's because they've already been hit, so they've lit up those two. Oh, and by the way, I do. I always do this with the lights on and everything. You're better off doing it with everything turned off. We just do it with the lights on so it makes a better video. Looks more interesting. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to easily clean it. I'm going to wipe it down with a wet towel, paper towel, and just clean it up a little bit. And then we're going to use a uh, magic eraser very lightly on the play field. Not go crazy, because if you go crazy, you'll lose art. But there's areas like this. See all the swirls from the ball? See, you didn't see any of that until I got close, did you? <laughs> So all of that can be cleaned up slightly with a magic eraser and it'll make it look better. So you can see the age if you get really close. So while it looks good from a distance, especially when it doesn't focus, but while it looks good from a dif distance, it, it uh, is not great whenever you get down close to it. So. Um, so let me wipe it down though first with a wet paper towel and then we'll see what it looks like after that. So this is how it looks after just wiping it down. You can see that that doesn't get rid of the heavy dirt. There's just no way to get it out of there. So the reason that you use a magic eraser is because it's a foam that's little teeny tiny. Just the, the way it's made is it's so small. Smaller than a regular foam. And that foam gets down inside of those little cracks. Those are actually cracks in the top coat of the paint. And you see they're circular because... I leaned on the switch. <laughs> you can see they're circular because the, uh, the ball is, you know, rolling around, eating into the paint and then making these little cracks. So this foam helps get down inside of those and clean them up a little bit. But if you go too crazy, it, it's basically very light sandpaper. But it works better than sandpaper because it's a finer material. So if you use sandpaper, it, it would just take the paint off. Well, if you use this too much, it'll take the paint off. So you got to be very, very careful. And stuff like this uh, purple here, if you look, it, now if, you, if you're any good with color, if you look, this entire play field is yellowed. There's like a yellow cast over the whole play field. So that purple at one time would have been a lot brighter, um, but it's yellowed. So either, I don't know if like the clear coat over it has yellowed. People have said nicotine does it, but it, this is something that won't come off. So, I mean, it's it's like something in the paint has yellowed. But uh, it, that's what gives it that kind of vintage look is everything's yellow. So look at the, look at the wood. It's all yellowed. You can see where it's uh, cut through that varnish. It's more of a white color. So all of the paint has that same yellowed color on it. So if you, if you get on his jacket too much, what's going to happen is you're going to cut through the varnish and then the paint underneath it is not going to be yellow anymore. So it'll be more purple and that little spot will look brand new and the rest of it will have a yellow tint to it. So don't go crazy with the magic eraser. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to wet it a little bit. You can use alcohol on it too, but that makes it even stronger. I'm trying I'm trying to just barely use it to clean it up. So I'm going to get the magic eraser a little bit wet and then I'm going to clean it up and just do some problem spots, but uh, again, I'm I'm going to go very lightly on it. So let's see how it looks after we clean it up with the magic
Okay, so now it has a haze all over everything from the magic eraser, but you can see that it really does a good job in cleaning up like the fender skirts and stuff. Um, and you saw us making the guy's face look a lot better. You can see the the, swir the cracks are still there, but they just don't have dirt in them anymore. Let me see if I can get the focus better. I want you to see the actual cracks. Yeah, see it? So the cracks are still there. But they don't have dirt in them anymore. So now that they're clean, you put a nice wax on it, and theoretically the wax keeps dirt from being able to get back down in the cracks and keeps it nice and clean and pretty looking. Okay, so next uh, we're going to wipe it down with rag again to get all of the haze off of it. And then we're just going to wax, 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 wax. And we'll see how she turns out. I, now, you know, sometimes I touch up some paint. There is a little bit of worn paint. Stuff like this. I'm not worried about. Stuff like this. There, It is cracked around the... You can't see it. So it is cracked away around the light bulbs, but those are under the the, um, the rollover shields anyway, so you can't hardly tell. And uh, whenever when you, I, I, I touch them up, if I think it will make the thing look better, I don't think it'll. If I touch that up, I don't think it would help anything. It'd be a lot of work, and I don't think that you'd end up with a nicer machine. This one has some wear on it, but remember the. I probably didn't mention it on this video, but if you've been watching all the videos. Someone has repainted it and done a pretty crummy job, really. So the thing, you know, it has its little flaws. So spending a ton of time getting this to look just a little bit better, even if I was capable of getting it to look a little bit better, just isn't worth it on this machine. It would act, it'll actually look pretty nice with just a little bit of minor wear here and there. It makes it look old, right? Um, but you can also see how there's a little less of that yellow sheen all over everything just because we cleaned it all up. <sighs> Pretty wild. Okay, so uh, I'll wipe it back down and then we'll, let's start on the wax. What do you think about that?
All right, so I got it all back together. It's all on there and it's looking pretty good. Let's see how the guy's face turned out. Pretty good. The spinners, this was the first game of spinners, so the spinners are a little worn. But you know what? They spin pretty good. So all of that seems good. Um, hmm. The flipper here, though, this one's down too low. Or I guess uh, maybe this one's up too high. Hmm. Do you need a wide shot or a more narrow shot? I guess I'll drop this one just slightly to make it match that one. There's something about that being lined up with that looks right. That looks a little off, so I'll drop this one a little bit. So let's, we'll adjust the flipper, and then we got to print cards for the uh, apron, and then we'll see how she comes out. Let me show you how we adjust the flipper, though. So in one of the other videos, we already did under the play field, but whenever they repainted it, and you know somebody must have worked through this game not too long ago because they repainted it, and whenever they did, they worked on the flippers a little bit, so they don't really need any parts or anything. They're working fine, or I believe they are. Uh, but to adjust that, you loosen these two little set screws on this paw, and then once you get them both loose, you can, uh, you can move the thing however you want it up here. So I'll move it till I get it lined up like the other one is, and then we'll tighten it back up. Okay, folks, we're going to play it just for a minute because we got to test it out, right? Now I'm going to do a whole other video of playing this sucker. Uh, whenever we, uh, after we get it all done, we still got a little bit of stuff left, but pretty much we're ready to go. So we'll test play it a little bit though, just to make sure it looks like everything is uh, working. Since we spent so much time on the play field. but we'll do a whole other video looking at the looking at the uh, rules and all of that. It looks like the main issue is that there are four stand up targets of different colors, and whenever you hit them, it turns on the pop bumpers to make them worth 10 points instead of one point. And then I believe it lights up these ones that are worth 50 points as well. So let's see if she works. I got zero points. Right down the middle. You can't hit that one. I mean, there's a little bit of a distance between there, right? down there for a minute. You gotta watch that middle one it looks like. Looks like that looks like that middle one will make you drain. 76 points. Ball three. But ball one didn't even count. There's my green one. Oh let it right past me. 114 points ball four. Now on this one, on this one, you know, they're actually called swinging targets because this is a Gottlob swing along. So from now on, I'm not calling them spinners anymore. These are, I'm going to call them swingers from now on. This thing's pretty sweet, really. Whoop. So there you go, folks. I got 476 points on our first game, but that's pretty good. I think it's coming along pretty nicely. What do you think? 
So I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Like I said, we'll do another one of us actually playing it and all that stuff. But I think uh, I think we're definitely getting there. We just about got it got it ready to go. Um, we got to clean it up a little bit more. I didn't have to print this; it was just turned over backwards. And since it's the original ones, you know, I'd rather leave those. I've got card paper and stuff I can print them on, but they never look they never look like they're original. You know, they're only original once, people. An interesting thing about this game that I've noticed is that it carries over, so you hit these four targets to turn on different stuff, and it carries over from game to game. Whenever you get all four of them lit up, they're only good for that ball, and then this lights up and says 100 points resets targets when lit, and whenever you drain that whatever ball that is that you got all four of them lit up on, it finally resets them. But that might be 15 balls from now if it's on the third game. It just depends on, you know, depends on how the thing plays. So I guess the strategy would be to get three of them lit up and try not to touch the other one. If you're good enough to, to aim like that. <laughs> All right, so leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And we'll do another video, like I said, of us actually playing it more. Uh, putting it through its motions more and checking out all the rules and all the artwork and everything. Um, so uh, look for that. And we'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links. If you don't know about that, there is a link to Amazon.com down below. If you go to that, we sent you there. And so they give us a tip for anything you might choose to buy on Amazon while you are there. So that's been pretty cool. A lot of people have been doing that. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. If, uh, uh, if you haven't yet, check out our brother channel. My brother Donnie is literally my brother Donnie. And uh, he's always doing a lot of crazy stuff. It has nothing to do with arcade games or pinball machines, but he's always into something special. So lately, we have been working on this old building that we bought that was a grocery store, actually, in the 60s. But it's a little tiny building, so don't think like, uh, uh, like your Kroger or your Harris Teeter or your Piggly Wiggly. It's not quite that big. It's a, it's a little tiny one. But uh, we've been working on fixing that up lately, and we're going to rent it out whenever we get it all done. And, you know, a little secret, we might already be all done, but we're just now finishing the videos. So, you know. But, uh, but, but he's got a bunch of them up, so go check that out. And uh, we will see you on the next one. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Gottlieb's Swing Along.